Welcome to the special edition of Ask the Experts. I'm Claudia Otero. We are celebrating Heart Month, and today we're coming to you from one of our cardiac catheterization laboratories, also known as a cath lab. Every day, our nationally recognized cardiac team performs minimally invasive procedures, providing life-changing structural care in our three state-of-the-art cath labs. Shortly, you will be meeting some members of our exceptional cardiac care team. Joining me today is Megan Giovanetti, clinical manager of our cardiac cath lab. Thank you for being here, Megan. Can you please introduce our first presenter? Thank you, Claudia. Our first presenter is Dr. Richard Gerber. Dr. Gerber joined our healthcare system more than 30 years ago. Today, he'll be focusing on acute myocardial infarction, better known as a heart attack. Dr. Gerber will demonstrate how he performs a stent procedure to open clogged arteries. Dr. Gerber? Hi, everybody. Um, welcome. Uh, thanks, Megan. As uh, Megan mentioned, uh, we're going to be talking about myocardial infarction today. Um, cardiovascular disease is still the number one leading cause of death in our country. And um, myocardial infarction, ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, is really um, the worst possible circumstance that you can, you can have. And so we're under uh, a time pressure to try to open somebody's artery when they're having a heart attack. Uh, we have a national standard that within 90 minutes of a patient arriving in the hospital, we want to get them from the door to the artery opened. So I'm going to try and show you how we do that. Um, we have uh, Jennifer here, who's a uh, cardiovascular tech, who's going to help me get a, a gown on. Ordinarily, I'd be wearing a, a mask. We try to do this using sterile technique, of course. And uh, we've got a whole team here to, to make this happen. Suzette Urquidez is behind me. She's the uh, 1995 California Nursing Association Nurse of the Year. And we've been working together with taking care of heart patients like this for almost 30 years. Suzette's here, a registered nurse, and Jennifer, who's a tech. Uh, we also have back in the control room, Melissa, who's a, also a tech, who's monitoring everything on the computer and uh, keeping track of the patient's blood pressure. So we need a whole team to make this happen for patients to be able to you know, have a successful procedure and hopefully limit the size of their heart attack and and limit the damage to their heart. So what we're gonna have to do is get, you know, get the patients prepped uh, like we would in an operating room, have a sterile, uh, sterile field and sterile equipment. Um, uh, we can either uh, enter the body. We're gonna do a percutaneous procedure, which means we're gonna go through the skin. This is not an open-chested procedure. This is a procedure in which we can either uh, anesthetize the groin or alternatively, we can anesthetize the wrist and access the radial artery or the femoral artery. Um, our patient Tiffany, as, uh, who's having the heart attack, she looks great for somebody having a heart attack. <laughs> uh, she's got a, a, a groin prepped here, but we can do that either way. And then we start out by um, having Suzette give the patient some medications to keep them sleepy and relaxed and not have too much discomfort. You know, we use some narcotic and some uh, you know, gentle sedatives for, so that people are comfortable. Um, and then we also use uh, lidocaine to anesthetize the patient either over the groin or over the wrist. Um, once we do that, uh, we try to get access to either the femoral artery or the radi radial artery. Um, we'll do that with a, a puncture needle, uh, which looks like this. Uh, once we anesthetize over the groin, then we use this puncture needle to, to access the femoral artery, a smaller needle for the radial artery, and then through that needle, once we're in the artery, we'll have blood return. Um, then we put a wire through the, art, uh, through the, through the needle into the artery. Um, the needle to, can come out, and then on the back of the uh, wire, the leading edge of the wire is in the body now, in the femoral artery and the, the other end of the wire is outside of the body. And then we take this introducer catheter and we put it over the wire. It goes into the body and the wire comes out. This dilator comes out. And then this tube has a one-way valve so that uh, we can not have blood coming out of the body and access into the arterial system 
um, uh, to get to the heart. So once we have this in the artery, then we can take longer wires and catheters to get up to the heart. So this, this catheter here is a catheter that's designed and shaped to go into the right coronary artery. What we'll do is put this catheter you know, with a wire extending from this end out through the other end. We have this nice, soft, flexible wire. And it goes through this interducer sheath. And then inside the body, it'll pass upstream from the femoral artery into the aorta up into the heart. And the, the way we do this is that we have an imaging chain here. We have an x-ray tube that's underneath the table. We have an imaging chain here. This is our camera. Um, and the x-ray tube and the camera can move in all different directions as we're uh, passing the catheters. So we can step on fluoroscopy, have x-ray that enables us to follow the catheter and follow the wire um, as it passes through the body from the leg through the belly up into the chest. Okay, so uh, once we get this catheter up into the uh, aortic root, um, then you can, you can look on this uh, monitor here and see what our image looks like. This, uh, this picture shows the, the tip of this very same catheter. Um, it's coming down the ascending aorta and the end of this, this tube or catheter is through the, uh, the tube through which we inject this very dense liquid, an iodine containing liquid. So that as, as we inject it into the artery, it creates uh, an image of the channel of the blood vessel. Okay, so that's what you're seeing on this screen here now is this is a picture of the right coronary artery. And as you look at the, the contrast or the dye as it passes down the artery, you see this uh, wavy black um, image that stops. And so it stops and then at that point what we're going to have to do is try to get the artery open. That's, a, that's an image of the right coronary artery occluded and our task is to open up that artery and restore the blood flow to the, uh, to the right side of the heart and to the back and the bottom of the heart. So we're going to do that by passing a guide wire that comes out the end of this catheter. So yeah, so we have a, a guide wire that we put a tip on and then the guide wire comes out the end of the, uh, of the guiding catheter and then usually we'll, we'll pass the wire first. So what we see here in this picture is uh, the wire is now across the occluded right coronary artery that we saw in the previous picture. Um, this has now the, the uh, balloon catheter with the stent that's mounted on the catheter. We pass this catheter with the balloon and the stent over the guide wire like a you can think of it sort of like a railroad car going over a, a railroad track and we use small injections of the contrast and um, the x-ray to position the balloon and the stent at the place where the the blood clot is or the blockage is and then we expand this Jennifer has a device that you see that we can use to uh, expand the balloon and expand the stent. Maybe we can do that now so everybody can see what that looks like. So this is a balloon expandable metal coil. And then once we expand the balloon, uh, we take it down, we deflate the balloon, the stent will uh, remain in the artery, uh, compressed into the wall of the artery. And then we can take the um, balloon catheter out. We usually leave the wire in. And then this is, this is a stent device. This is actually a coated stent. Yeah. Yeah. So th these, are, these are what the stent devices look like that stay in the coronary artery. What it would look like, this is what's left in the body. These, are, these stay in. Once we put one of these stents in, it's a permanent implant. Uh, it can't be removed without an open chested surgery. It does take some weeks or months for it to heal. So once we put a stent in, 
Uh, we have to give medicine to inhibit the clotting of the blood. Typically, Su Suzette or the nurse would give the uh, blood thinner at, at, at either the start or the end of the procedure. Um, we give blood thinners during the procedure to prevent clotting. Um, and as I mentioned, and we can see on the screen, we also take uh, pictures of the main pumping chamber. If you look at the monitor right now, you can see that there's a pigtail-shaped catheter inside the main pumping chamber of the left ventricle so that we can get a, a, an image of uh, what the pumping function looks like. And we can look at the walls of the heart, which are outside of that uh, darkened image to see if there's an area of the heart that looks uh, weakened uh, or sluggish. So then once we're done, we take the catheters out of the body. Uh, we still have an introducer catheter that I showed you that's in the femoral artery or in the radial artery. And uh, if the catheter is in the femoral artery, then typically we'll take it out while at the same time uh, deploying a device that can um, seal the puncture wound in the femoral artery. With the radial artery in the wrist, we usually just put a, a clamp uh, over the wrist and, and leave that clamp on for an hour or two and then sl uh, slowly let the uh, pressure out of the, the clamp uh, as, the, as the artery heals. Um, so that's basically the procedure. The, after the procedure, the patients are admitted to our heart center. Typically, with somebody who's having a myocardial infarction, a heart attack, they're going to be in the hospital for 24 to 48 hours, I would say typically two nights in the hospital if everything goes well. Hopefully they uh, go home in two days and can get on with a, a happy, healthy life. I mean, you know, so, I, I, so as I mentioned, I, uh, I think it's important to understand how serious uh, this kind of an event is. I think you know, the public should not ignore warning symptoms of a heart attack, uh, chest pain, uh, or any unusual pain in the neck, the jaw, the back, the arms, the shoulders, uh, especially if it's associated with unusual sweating or dizziness or shortness of breath. Uh, I would urge everyone, if they have symptoms like that, to call 911, not delay. The faster you can get to the hospital and get care, uh, the less likely you are to have uh, permanent and irreversible damage to the heart, and the, also the, the less likely it is that you'll die from the heart attack. So, you know, the faster you can get attention and the faster we can get the artery open, um, the better it is. Uh, to prevent needing to ever be in this room, I hardly urge you to uh, not smoke, um, eat a healthy diet with a lot of the things that we grow here in the Salinas Valley. Um, if you have high blood pressure, you need to uh, restrict your salt and sodium intake and get regular exercise and good sleep. Um, manage your stress. Uh, you may need blood pressure lowering medication. Uh, if you have high cholesterol, uh, again, uh, a you know, plant-based diet or Mediterranean diet in combination with cholesterol medication may be important for you. Uh, diabetic, diabetes mellitus. Diabetes is a really important risk factor for heart attack and diabetics really need to watch their intake of carbohydrates, of sugars, and you know, may need uh, medication also to control uh, their diabetes. Um, and if you have a history in your family of heart disease, you, meet, you need to be um, especially aware of those, uh, of your added risk and the possibility for premature heart attack and, and get regular examinations by your primary care physician. Okay, so thanks very much for uh, your attention today. I hope you learned a little something about what we do here uh, in the cath lab to try to save people's lives when they're having a heart attack. Thank you, Dr. Gerber. Isn't it amazing to see how this minimally invasive procedure is performed in the cath lab and how it saves lives? Our next presenter is Dr. Yusuf Hindi. He joined our healthcare system five years ago. Dr. Hindi will be focusing on CardioMEMS, a remote monitoring system which measures real-time pulmonary artery pressure. This system was designed specifically for heart failure patients. The sensor that is implanted is so small, it's the size of a paperclip. Dr. Hindi, take it away. Well, thank you, Megan. Thanks, everybody, for being here. 
Um, I'm going to be talking about heart failure. Uh, heart failure is one of the most common medical diagnoses that brings in patients to the hospital and also one of the most common things that all brings patients to, to our clinic. I am the cardiologist responsible for the heart failure clinic at the Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System. And well, heart failure is one of the most problematic issues that we've been encountering for the last few years. It's a problem where the heart pump is not able to compensate for what the body needs. And for that, people start having symptoms like shortness of breath, uh, swelling in their legs, and just inability to do the usual things that they're normally able to do. Um, that's the main problem with heart failure, is that you need to have a strict regimen of medication, strict regimen of dietary restrictions, which, which includes salt and water restriction. Um, and one of the procedures that we use in our practice to monitor patients with this kind of problem is a device called CardioMEMS. Now this is a device that is very small. It's a, almost like a paperclip size and uh, it is inserted through a procedure. Uh, normally if there was a patient here on this table, they would be lying on the table like this. Uh, we would go through their groins usually um, and at that time we implant the, the device between their hearts and their lungs. This is where it goes. These are the arteries of the lung. Um, and the device itself is implanted at that time. We keep monitoring the patient's pressure on the inside, and we can do that remotely uh, from the comfort of their homes. Uh, this helps us decrease the chance of patients going into the hospital. Also, it, we found that this decreases the, the number of clinic visits that they have to do throughout the year. Usually, if somebody is sick due to heart failure, they have to come to the clinic on a regular basis, you know, at least monthly or maybe even less than, more frequently than that. And that creates a problem for these patients on the logistical side. We found this as one of the ways to decrease those clinic visits. Uh, at home, a patient would be lying on this pillow, and this pillow has a sensor on the inside. You, the patient presses the green button. This pillow has the capacity of telling patients that they need to move um, to get a better signal. Once they do, it takes about a few minutes to get the uh, reading to our clinic. At that time, we would be able to monitor and see what the pressures are like. And at that point, we'd be able to call the patients and ask them uh, to monitor you know, their weights, see if they're swollen in their legs, and also uh, change the doses of their diuretics, which are the medications that we use in this kind of situation. And this is one of the devices that I implanted. Um, the procedure itself takes about 20 minutes from start to finish. Uh, the patients go home on, on the same day with a two hour recovery afterwards. Uh, there's not a lot of restrictions to their lifestyle uh, after the procedure is done. Um, and they can resume their daily activities. Uh, and if you have any questions regarding this procedure, uh, if you're interested in the, in the procedure in general, just give us a call. Um, and thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Hindi. These are just a couple of several minimally invasive cardiac procedures our nationally recognized team performs in our three cath labs. Dr. Gerber and Dr. Hindi, as well as all our other cardiologists, see patients at SVMC Central Coast Cardiology in Salinas. Their contact information is right there on your screen. They also see patients at Central Coast Cardiology in Monterey. That clinic is located at our Advanced Diagnostic Imaging Building, located at 5 Lower Ragsdale in Ryan Ranch. You will need a referral from your primary care physician when making an appointment with one of our cardiologists. Your heart health is very important. Please don't ignore your cardiac symptoms. Call 911 immediately if you're experiencing chest pain. Please remember, we are all here for you. I want to thank Dr. Gerber, Dr. Hindi, and our incredible cardiac team for those demonstrations. We appreciate your time, your expertise, and your dedication to healthcare and to our community. Claudia? That's right, Megan, thank you. It's amazing to see how far technology has come and really impressive to see our cardiac cath team in action. On behalf of our entire cardiac care team, our hospital and healthcare system, thank you for watching our special Heart Month edition of Ask the Experts. I'm Claudia Otero, love your heart. We do.